Today I've got a bit of a laid back community focused video to hopefully warm many of you up because I know a lot of you like myself are currently buried under many feet of snow in bone chilling temperature. Chicago is like native 27 or something crazy, they're like breaking records, their lowest low ever. And so hopefully you can all sit down with a nice hot cup of cocoa with extra marshmallows and join me because today we're going to be talking about the community's best or more accurately favorite javelin based on some pulls that I did. We got a pull from Mike Gamble, stuff from before and after the VIP demo. We're then going to talk about why I think the pull results got the results they got. We're going to talk about the four javelins as a whole. And then I'm going to spend some time talking about my favorite javelin, my personal buddy, the Colossus. So let's start with the poll that I did about three weeks ago. Relatively even results here. Three and a half thousand votes, decent sample size. 24% for the Ranger, 28% for the Storm, 25% for the Colossus, and 23% on that Interceptor. Now, the Storm started taking a bit of a lead, I would say, over the last two or three months. Pretty much the moment we saw all four of the Javelins, I think interest in the Storm started to rise. And here's my quick theory on that before we go any further. You see, the Interceptor, before we knew what it was, was looked at as the Sniper Javelin. Just, it was constantly in my comments. Everyone was convinced it's going to have cloaking, it's going to go fast, and it's going to be about using Sniper Rifles. Even though the developers were like, everybody can use Sniper Rifles, they were like, this is totally the Sniper Javelin, guys. And then when we saw it, and it was a melee-focused, like, Saboteur-style Javelin, I think people were like, oh, that's not it. <laughs> that's not the Sniper Javelin we wanted. Let's move on to something else. And the storm showed up, and I think it kind of started to fill that role because people saw it could hover for long periods of time. It had a shield that protected it when it was in the air. It had ranged abilities, sort of this mage-style role, and they just really saw the perfect fit for a sniper rifle. They were like, oh, okay, we could put a sniper rifle on this bad boy. It could hold so many sniper rifles, <laughs> and then we can float in the air somewhere and just take pot shots at people while casting our abilities. And that was a lot of what I saw in my comment section. So that's my personal theory. But let's go ahead and take a look at my poll that ran one day ago. And I went ahead and, and you know, kind of ruined any scientific accuracy that this might have had by adding a fifth option for all of them or more than one. And that came in at 31%. I think this is great to see because that means a lot of people are happy about Bioware's decision to allow us to use the exosuits as suits. They're not like locked in classes. You don't gotta start your campaign from the beginning and play through 20 hours of story, which gets longer and longer as they add more expansions. Destiny, I'm looking at you. Just so you can play all of the classes, you can just swap between them. And a lot of people are like, hell yeah, I'm totally gonna do that. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. That being said, when we take a look at the rest of the poll, we'll notice the Rangers at 13, the Colossus at 15, the Interceptor at 17, and the Storm still has a pretty reasonable lead at 23%. To cement the Storm's victory here in the polls, we've got a poll from Mike Gamble with 14,000 votes, much larger sample size than mine, obviously, and the Storm's at 40% there. <laughs> 40%! 23% on the Interceptor, 19% on the Colossus, which as you can see, I voted for, and 18% for the Ranger. Again, I just feel like a big part of this leading up to the demo was people looking at the Storm and saying, not only is there a lot of drama with that character, with that EXO, but sniper rifles, man. <laughs> I say that based on my experience with making anything that has sniper rifle in the tag or in the title on YouTube. In fact, I've spent like weeks making videos. Some of my most dedicated projects will get like 4,000 views. But I made a video once about shooting someone with a sniper rifle in Ghost Recon at a really, really long range in Wildlands. It's got like 3 million views or something stupid. It's just people are like, sniper rifles, long distance, yes. And so I think there's a bit of that there. But when I think we talk about the poll after the VIP demo, I think we need to talk about the accessibility of the storm. I think by far, the storm is the most accessible of the four javelins. The ranger is definitely there, but the ranger is also the first javelin you get to use. For a lot of people, it was like, break me free of the ranger shackles. I want to try something else. I've seen these other javelins. Now I actually want to play something else. And so that was, I think, where a lot of people then went to the storm, you know, and when they played the storm, they found a javelin that just made sense right from the get go. I mean, that is totally the thing about the storm for me is I went from ranger to Colossus. I was like, holy crap. How do, I, how do I play this thing? What kind of a tank is this? It's clearly not a passive tank. It's more of an active tank. Okay, I got to figure this out. The same with the Interceptor. It's like, wait, okay, it's got a triple dash. Do I get iframes with these triple dashes? Yes, I do. Okay, that's kind of how I survive. You know, it's so chaotic with the other Javelins. There's a reasonable learning curve there. The Storm is kind of just like, hey, hold right bumper, hold left bumper, you know, click your abilities on your keyboard. 
and you get a giant ring on the ground and then you just cast something and it does damage. You shoot, you know, bolts of ice out of your hands and it freezes people. Not only is it accessible from a just shoot things, do damage, float in the air with your ability standpoint, but I also feel like the storm is far more accessible when it comes to understanding the combo system. You know, it's really straightforward, like frost, and then somebody breaks the guy who's frozen. You know, from a visual perspective, without even knowing that frost shards are a primer, you can kind of figure out they're a primer because they actually physically freeze an enemy. And I think a lot of people, their gut reaction is to then try and smash that frozen enemy, whether it's with, you know, another attack, a melee in the case of the storm even will detonate it, or if they have a buddy like the Colossus coming and railgun it or ground pound it, and then before you know it, they now have a basic understanding for the combo system. It's just not that easy with the other javelins. It doesn't come across that accessibly. And I'm not saying there isn't like room to learn with the storm and that it's not fun because of that. I think it's an extremely enjoyable javelin to play. I loved my time with it, especially using wind wall, just setting myself up defensively all the time, using my Devastator sniper rifle and a big heavy pistol. Just like the other javelins, it's so much fun to play when you find out where it's supposed to function, and I think that is it. Once again, it's just easier to figure out where the storm belongs on the battlefield. Having that shield and figuring out very quickly that you get a more powerful version of it when you hover pretty much says, okay, I should stay here. I shouldn't run in and try and punch people in the face and use shotguns at point blank range. This is kind of where I belong. Whereas the Colossus and the Interceptor, you totally understand where they're supposed to belong, but it's actually pretty difficult to figure out how to make them actually work where they belong. You know, with the Interceptor, again, people not knowing how powerful the dash is. I see, I've seen a lot of that. I've seen a lot of people like, dude, I'm just getting annihilated with the Interceptor. There were posts on the subreddit about the Interceptor being super squishy. And then a bunch of people are like, dude, your dash gives you iframes. You can just survive anything, basically, if you know how to use it. It's the same thing with the Colossus. It was really hard to get into it. It felt amazing, by the way, when I first piloted the Colossus. I was like, wow, this feels way different than the Ranger. Like, this is heavy and meaty. I feel like I'm flying a tank. But when you try and passively tank and you don't really use your shield you just take a lot of damage. Even if you've got components to boost your shields and your health, it doesn't matter. That shield is everything. Actively deploying that shield will let you absorb insane amounts of damage, and that's what keeps you in the fight. You know, you can't have the shield up while you're using your weapons, but I can go in, use the flamethrower, use any of my close quarter weapons, and maybe I'm running a shotgun, maybe I'm just spraying with my auto cannon. I can be in the thick of it, just laying down the damage, and then as soon as I see my health bar start to get worryingly low, I can pop that shield, and I can start picking up health globes. And if you're really smart about it and you work with the team, you can essentially run in priming with the Colossus in the thick of it, holding the front line, using like your rally cry to call in enemies so you can actually aggro them. And you can prime them all. And then as soon as your HP gets low, you pop up that shield, a teammate comes in, detonates all those prime targets, and you got health globes. You know, and you'll be able to improve the drop of those health globes with things like inscriptions in the long run to just build out an even better tanking role. Again, it's an active tanking role. And you can do some really cool stuff with the shield. You can run through enemies while sprinting. You can fly through and into enemies with the shield while it's deployed. It is a really fun role, but it takes a little bit of getting to know it. And again, that's the same thing with the Interceptor. And every javelin in the game, you know, has room to be mastered. And that's honestly my favorite thing about the way they handled the combo system is that not only is there, you know, a certain level of mastery for all four of the javelins, but their combo detonators, when they detonate a combo, they all do something different. So they all have additional purpose on the battlefield when it comes to the game's combo system. It's not just about what they're doing all of the time with their with their own weapons and their own abilities. And you know, this one's meleeing, this one's sitting far back, this one's got a shield, this one's doing that. When it actually comes to working together to detonate combos, even if they're their own combos, you can do something different. The Colossus is gonna turn a frozen guy into a mini nuke. You know, the Ranger is gonna do an insane amount of single target damage. The Interceptor and the Storm can start to apply uh, auras and chain damage across multiple targets. It's great, it gives people a lot of reason to think about playing other javelins. And I think that's why at the end of the day, when you add that option to a poll that says all of them or more than one, more people end up going with that and it ends up beating every other single javelin out. So while yes, the storm is currently in the lead, I don't think it's because it's like OP or something like that. I think it has a lot to do with that accessibility, a lot to do with that ease of understanding. And I think those numbers will definitely shift over, shift over time. I mean, undoubtedly, they'll shift because there's a group of people who care a lot about min-maxing. And when they start to see raw damage numbers, they're going to gravitate towards what does the most. But I think 
that's the cool thing about the co-op experience yeah. is that I don't think necessarily there's going to be one best javelin because you're going to want a little bit of everything. You might want two Colossus and a Storm and an Interceptor. You might want two Storms to prime everything like crazy, uh, a Colossus and a Ranger to detonate all of those things. There's just like this insane number of combinations I can think about in my head and that I know many of you are thinking about in your head that are going to allow you to do a lot of cool things, which is why as we push forward and we start getting into the full release and I start talking about builds and guides and strategies, I'm going to do my best to make sure that those guides are just that. They are guides. They are not you know, written words that you need to <laughs> take a blood oath on. You got to do exactly what I say. I don't believe in setting like hard restricted guidelines for people when I talk about builds because I think that leads to that best build culture that we see all too often in games. The Monster Hunter community has been extremely against that for a very long time. And I'm not saying that I don't think people should like min max the numbers and run them. I think that's cool. And I think when people are really into it, Dinosaur D, for example, he's massively into that sort of thing. I mean, they've done crazy things with Frontier Defense. And if he ever plays Anthem, you better watch out, man. That dude's going to be on the subreddit blowing people's minds because he is that dude who should just be, they should just pay him millions of dollars to QA for like every game ever. He breaks the things, he finds the ways, and he is a master of the numbers when it comes to crunching them and getting maximum damage out of that. There are people who are going to do that, and I think that's cool, but to say that every best build video actually goes to that length simply isn't true. And I'm not telling people, stop making best build videos. People are always going to do that. I just like to sell set a healthy precedent to encourage people to experiment and to have fun. If my build videos can help somebody figure out how builds work and what they might want to aim for, but then they go on out and do their own thing and modify my build with their own ideas, then I will have done exactly what I have wanted to do. <laughs> Don't just copy paste, maybe copy paste at first, but then let it inspire you. Come up with your own stuff. Because you can play a game like Anthem, you should you should be able to play it all the way through the hardest difficulty without ever having to obsessively min-max. Yes, min-maxing can be important, but you should be able to have fun, make the builds you want, and still complete the game on the hardest difficulties. If they've done their due diligence and given us that flexibility, you will totally be able to do that. You won't ever have to min-max. If that's what you love, you do you. But I think freedom and allowing the player to use their imagination with builds is at the end of the day the thing that i want to encourage so we'll leave it at that a little bit of an anthem in-game inspirational discussion <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i would love to hear from you what your favorite javelin or javelins were during the course of the vip demo and why i love to have discussion about that sort of thing drop your feelings down in the comment section below i know a lot of you are going to be jumping into the open beta the open demo the open demo this weekend for the very first time so we'll definitely be i'll definitely be looking forward to uh you know comments from you guys and if you want to hit me up on twitter and talk about your open demo experience since you didn't get a chance to do so in the comment section here you are always welcome to do that at tony with an e underscore mo come over ramble with me i'll typically get back to everyone that i can because i just like talking video games that is all from me stay warm out there take care of yourselves and stay safe in this cold and all of the snow Thank you so much for watching, and as always, try to be awesome to one another, because at the end of the day, it's all we've got. You have been brought here for a purpose, the most important.